Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the strange case of Dr. Horace Wells. In 1886, Scottish author Robert Louis Stevenson published his famous novella, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The tale centered on the mild-mannered Dr. Jekyll, who, after testing a chemical concoction on himself, is turned into the murderous sociopath Hyde. Stevenson's book was an instant sensation. The story of Jekyll and Hyde has been retold countless times, in song, on stage, and film. Yet, in a case of truth being stranger than fiction, a similar tale of science and madness occurred four decades earlier in the United States. During the 1830s and 40s, Horace Wells, a dentist, had a flourishing practice in Hartford, Connecticut. In 1844, after observing the effects of nitrous oxide, or laughing gas, during a road show, Dr. Wells began experimenting with using the gas as an anesthetic during dental procedures. After several successful experiments, including having his own tooth extracted, Wells was prepared to demonstrate his discovery to the public. In January 1845, Wells, with the help of his former apprentice and business partner, William Morton, arranged a demonstration in Boston of the use of nitrous oxide for anesthesia. In front of an audience of doctors, Wells sedated a volunteer patient and began pulling a tooth. Suddenly, the patient screamed out in pain. The presentation had failed, and Wells was ridiculed. Depressed and ill, he returned to Hartford. In the meantime, William Morton had begun experimenting with other sedative chemicals. In 1846, he successfully demonstrated the anesthetic properties of ether. Overnight, Morton was a scientific star. Wells was left in the background. Despite Morton's success, Wells continued to advocate for the use of nitrous oxide. Determined to gain recognition for his discovery, he traveled to France in 1847 to present his claim to the Parisian Medical Society and the French Academy of Medicine. When he returned to the United States, Wells began experimenting on himself with other chemicals, including ether and chloroform. Slowly, the continued exposure to various chemicals began to affect Wells' personality, and he soon developed an addiction to chloroform. One evening in January 1848, while under the influence of the drug, Wells attacked two prostitutes with sulfuric acid in New York. He was arrested and imprisoned in the Tombs, New York City's infamous jail. When Wells realized what he had done and how damaged his mind had become, he was anguished and despondent. On January 24, 1848, after inhaling a numbing dose of chloroform, Wells slashed his femoral artery in the bath and died. He was buried in Hartford. After his death, Wells did eventually garner the recognition that he deserved, and he is known today as the discoverer of anesthesia. His story can be seen as a cautionary tale about the dangers of chemical experimentation and of the risks some are willing to take in the name of medical science. And in the tale of Jekyll and Hyde, perhaps we have a case of art imitating life. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.